One of the great aspects of movies is that they can be enjoyed all over the world. Movie studios go to great lengths to ensure this. A lot of times, there are certain things in the movies that are changed to appeal to moviegoers outside of the United States. Have you ever seen an American-made movie that was meant for another country? Check out this list we've compiled for you of movies that were changed. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and join our notification squad to stay up to date on all our content. Can you guess which feature film these emojis are referencing? Find out shortly following the video. I got him! Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Monsters University. Cupcakes. In 2013, Pixar released Monsters University, the prequel to Monsters, Inc. It was great to see how Mike Wazowski and James P. Sullivan became inseparable after their time in college. Of course, like other Pixar movies, the comedy was great and the story was very entertaining. One scene that was changed for global audiences was when Randall Boggs made some cupcakes to try to make some friends within the campus fraternities, all before he became an evil character in Monsters, Inc. In the American version, the cupcakes read, Be My Pal. In the international versions of the film, they simply featured a smiley face. Pixar changed the cupcakes to make the joke work for non-English speaking moviegoers. Monsters University did pretty well in the box office and made $82 million during its opening weekend and grossed over $268 million on a budget of $200 million. Unfortunately, we probably won't see another film with these characters and we'll have to live with just the two films. There are a few other Pixar movies that tore at our heartstrings compared to the relationship between Sully and Boo. Seeing her face light up as she saw Kitty was one of the cutest things we've seen from a Pixar movie. Am I really that fat? Toy Story 2, Buzz Lightyear's speech. There's one scene in Toy Story 2 that was changed for global audiences that you probably didn't know about. In case you forgot, Buzz Lightyear gave a rousing and heroic speech to Andy's toys before they travel across town. During the pep talk, an American flag appears behind him and the Star Spangled Banner plays in the background. For the international release, Pixar changed the flag to a spinning globe with fireworks shooting off, while composer Randy Newman wrote a new score called the One World Anthem. Leave it up to Disney Pixar to find American themes in their films and make changes to better include the rest of the world. It definitely helps ensure audiences everywhere enjoy the film, and you can't necessarily tell it was made in the United States. There are probably a lot of fans out there that would say Toy Story 2 is their favorite of the trilogy. After Andy's mom has a yard sale and Woody is taken by Al, the greedy toy collector, the lengths that the toys go to to get Woody back are pretty remarkable. Once again, all the humor you would expect from a Toy Story movie made its way into the movie and captivated audiences. <laughs> Iron Man 3, Chinese version. Iron Man 3, released in 2013, is a co-production between Marvel Studios and China-based DMG Entertainment. The Chinese version of the film included some new scenes that weren't in the US version. The character Dr. Wu, who was introduced in the beginning of the movie, is expanded upon and given additional scenes in the Chinese version. Overall, there is roughly four minutes of footage that was added. There's also a new scene that features Iron Man with middle school students that can be seen in a news report. They even went as far as putting product placement from Guli Duo, which is a popular milk brand in China. Iron Man 3 was well liked by many fans, especially after the sequel was a bit of a disappointment. It did great in the box office and grossed over $408 million. Remember, Iron Man 3 was released a year after The Avengers, and a lot of people were hyped after that movie. Iron Man 3 had a better story and was more direct than the sequel, and the focus wasn't so much on explosions and heavy effects. Of course, Stark's wisecracks are another big selling point of the franchise and keep the movie entertaining. I'm part cat, part elephant, part dolphin. Dolphin? Inside Out, Soccer Fan. Inside Out, released in 2015, is another Disney movie that was changed for international audiences to enjoy. If you've never seen the movie, Inside Out is about a young girl named Riley who is uprooted from her Midwest life and moves to San Francisco with her parents. Her emotions, joy, fear, anger, disgust, and sadness all conflict when she has to navigate through a new city, house, and school. In the American version of the film, Riley is really passionate about hockey. However, in other countries, she's all about soccer, or better yet, football, a sport that is more well known around the world than hockey, so it makes sense. Another change in the movie was a scene from Riley's childhood where her father was feeding her broccoli, which she didn't like. In Japan, instead of broccoli, it was a green pepper instead. Apparently, green peppers are the disgusting green veggie over there. Once again, Disney did their research and went above and beyond to try and get moviegoers from all over the world to enjoy their film. It worked, because the film grossed over $355 million. It was a heartwarming movie and played on some very real aspects of being a human, which can be enjoyed by the whole family.
Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End, Chinese Pirate Captain. Pirates of the Caribbean is one of Disney's biggest movie franchises. Everyone loves when Johnny Depp graces the screen as his character, Captain Jack Sparrow. From the time we first saw him on screen in the role, it was a hit. In Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End, one character did not have as much screen time in China as the US. It was one of their biggest stars, Chow Yun-Fat, who played the pirate captain, Cao Fang. While he had about 20 minutes of screen time in the US, it was cut in half in China. A lot of his scenes were cut from this movie because, according to officials, his character was an insulting racial caricature. One scene that was cut involved Cao Feng reciting a famous Chinese poem to the heroine who he falls in love with at first sight. There were also protests from Singapore after Chow had a line saying, Welcome to Singapore. Captain Bobosa. Welcome to Singapore. It hinted at Singapore being a land of pirates and caused a number of people to be upset. Chow Yun-Fat is a great actor, and despite some racial controversy, it's a shame he didn't get all of his screen time in his home country. <laughs> Zootopia, newscaster animals. Animated movies tend to go to great lengths to ensure kids all over the world never notice they're watching a movie made in a different country. For example, Zootopia, released in 2016, changed the animal newscasters depending on where the movie would be released. The US, Canada, and France had a moose, China had panda bear, Japan had a tanuki, Australia and New Zealand had a koala, the UK had a corgi, and Brazil had a jaguar. In some countries, the animals were even voiced by local newscasters whose voices kids may have recognized. Zootopia did a great job of tailoring perfectly to include cultural differences from all over the world, which is pretty awesome. If you didn't know, Zootopia is a city where animals of all breeds live together in harmony. The story revolves around the first ever bunny police officer and a sly, cynical fox who must work together to uncover a conspiracy. The film made $73 million the first weekend in the box office, breaking Frozen's domestic opening weekend, which made $67.4 million. The film worldwide earned a little over $341 million. The different animal newscasters probably played a big part in the international success. Lincoln, history lesson. The hat, the beard, the face on our penny and $5 bill. Who doesn't know Abraham Lincoln, right? Well, people who aren't from the United States don't. When Steven Spielberg's movie, Lincoln, was getting ready for its international release, research showed that almost everyone has heard of President Lincoln, but they don't know exactly why he's played such a big role in our country's history. Luckily, Spielberg was kind enough to provide audiences with a little cheat sheet who weren't familiar with Abraham Lincoln. Most countries received an all new intro, explaining the Civil War and its context against black and white images, and the John Williams score playing over it. For the Japanese release, Spielberg took it up a notch and decided to appear on screen himself to give the country a history lesson on the U.S. It's a great part of our country's history, and it's pretty cool that Spielberg went to such great lengths so audiences could understand what was going on during that time period. Films about American history have always had a hard time overseas, and one reason Spielberg wanted to add in the extras toward the beginning of the film, it ended up doing pretty well and made $93 million overseas. Here's Johnny! <laughs> The Shining, typewriter scene. Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, based on Stephen King's book of the same name, is one of his most recognized films. Kubrick has been known for many things, but being relaxed isn't one of them. He was very particular about how he wanted his movies to be. He would routinely force dozens of takes for scenes that didn't really matter until the actors got them just right and he felt good about it inside. Kubrick's OCD went in full effect when he felt that the typewriting scene of Jack Torrance's masterpiece would be diminished if foreign viewers had to read in subtitles what all the pages said. The words could have easily been translated translated into other languages, but the sayings themselves only exist in English, so it would lose a lot of its context and meaning. Kubrick's secretary went through a lot just to create one manuscript for the American version. Imagine what she went through when she had to redo it a handful of times for international versions of the movie, which all contained a real saying from each particular country. It's understandable to want things to be just right and how you picture them, but Kubrick is in a whole other realm as far as his OCD goes. Captain America the Winter Soldier to-do list. If you were Captain America, there would be a lot to be curious about after being trapped underneath the ice for so long. After all, you'd be 90 years old and wonder what the heck happened the last seven decades. So much to see and do, and so little time. How much downtime does the Cap really have when he's not saving the world from annihilation? If you remember, Captain America has a to-do list during one scene in The Winter Soldier. It's filled with things he deems necessary to catch up on. Movies, events, music, and Steve Jobs, of course. However, if you saw the movie outside of the United States, you would see a few 
discrepancies on the list. For example, Steve, who lives across the pond, needs to research The Beatles, the TV show Sherlock, and Sean Connery. French Steve needs to listen to Daft Punk and watch The Fifth Element. You'd think the list would be a little bit bigger than that, but maybe the cap has been doing a lot with his downtime. He owes it to himself to get up to speed with all that happened over the years. It'd be funny in a future movie if he brings up to a fellow Avenger something he crossed off on his list. I am Groot. Save them? How? I am Groot. Guardians of the Galaxy. I am Groot. Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy is one of the most complex and demanding characters Vin Diesel has played, even if he only ever says three words. Diesel had to stand there and carefully consider how Groot would deliver his line, I am Groot. Now, it was probably already a long enough process to do this in English. Diesel eventually had to do the entire process again, 15 different times, one for each additional language. To make it easier for foreign fans that he was still Groot, Diesel had to read up his line in a different language for each international version. Diesel is a dedicated actor and learned how to say, I am Groot in Hungarian, Hindi, Czech, Polish, Portuguese, Spanish, Ukrainian, Mandarin, Japanese, French, Italian, Kazakh, German, Russian, and of course, English. Ich bin Groot. Nein! Diesel may have been constantly looking at a script, but even after the movie was completed, he was still able to remember a lot of his non-English lines. Jimmy Fallon put him on the spot, and Diesel was able to deliver. Groot has become a fan favorite character for obvious reasons, and has captured a lot of our hearts. We're looking forward to what teenage Groot is like after seeing a glimpse of him at the end of the movie. When you watch movies from now on, you may end up paying attention to what would be different for other countries. Pretty cool to learn what's changed, right? What did you think of this list that we compiled for you? Before we forget, the answer to the movie emoji quiz from earlier is... Well, did you get it right? Be sure and let us know in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, check out our playlist. Thanks for watching this video.